Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful drawing community. And in this video, we are going to learn how to create custom stickers that you can use in your Instagram stories. So let's get started. available on Instagram is a little bit of a process, but don't worry, I'm going to show you every single step that you need to do in order to make it possible. And we're going to be using this website called Giphy, and they're partnered with Instagram. So we're just going to create an account there, and I'm also going to show you exactly what you need to keep in mind when you're creating your GIFs. I'm going to show you how to create GIFs, how to export them, how to upload them on Giphy, literally everything you need to know. And I've also separated the video in chapters, so if you're only looking for one specific piece of information, you don't have to watch the whole thing, you can just move around and find what you're looking for. And also, little disclaimer here, I know GIF versus GIF, that's, you know, a whole conversation. The website Giphy themselves um, actually made an ad, like a campaign, a promo campaign with the peanut butter brand GIF. And they were basically saying, you know, GIF is peanut butter and GIF are images. So I'm just going along with that and I'm calling them GIFs. However, if you're more on the GIF team, feel free to, you know, comment below and we can we can fight in the comments about the pronunciation of of that word. But yeah, I'm just gonna go with, with GIF because that's what they're saying. GIF. Oh no, <laughs> I'm getting confused myself. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go with GIFs. GIFs. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> So let's start with the very basics of how to create and set up your Giphy account so that you're able to submit it for an artist profile. So just go on Giphy.com and then you go to login, of course. So if you don't have an account, you can just join Giphy. It is free, like most websites. You just need to have an email address and a password. I already have one, so I'm just going to log into my account. So this is what you're going to see. This is going to be your account. And in your account, you're going to notice a few things that you need to update if you want to apply for an artist profile. So just access your settings. So here in the menu at the top. And the first thing is simply going to be to add your profile picture. So on the left side, you're going to have your avatar. When you log in, it's going to be just like a, a random GIF. So you would upload your picture there. And then you go in the channel settings here at the bottom, making sure that it's set to public. You are also going to add some sort of a bio, and then you're gonna make sure that you have either a website or some social links. So basically, Giphy just wants to make sure that you're a real person <laughs> um, and that you have some sort of you know, a presence on the web. So now that we have our avatar and our website or social media links on our Giphy profile, we can move on to the next requirement to apply for an artist channel, which is we actually need to already have five to 10 stickers on our channel uh, that are original, animated and non-commercial artwork. And there are many ways to create GIFs. Um, I'm gonna show you how I create mine in Procreate. So you can see I have 10 here and I'm gonna show you a few techniques. So how to create text, how to create a simple animation, and then how to create a more complex animation. The first thing we need to do though is to make sure that the canvas that we're working on is going to be compliant with the Giphy upload rules. So you're going to create a custom canvas here. And seriously, it's super easy. The few rules that you have to remember are very simple. The main one is your canvas needs to be a square. So the width and the height need to be the same. And the image also needs to be fairly small. So I like to go with no more than a thousand pixels. Now, the other thing that is absolutely necessary is you need to set your color profile to RGB. And any of those is going to work. Just make sure that it's not set to CMYK. And once you have those things done, go ahead and tap on create. So it's automatically going to open up your canvas, which you can see it's a nice square, exactly like we need. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to go with one of the examples that I already created, but I basically followed the exact same process. So the animation interface is super simple in Procreate. You're going to see it's basically all in this bottom menu. Now the question is, how do you activate that? If you go in your range icon menu here at the top, if you select canvas, you're going to have the animation assets option, which is, if you uncheck it or check it, is going to be what opens or close the menu here at the bottom. 
And the way it works, basically every time you create a new layer in your layer panel here, it's going to become a frame at the bottom. And think of frames as little pages out of a flick book. So every page or every frame is going to be a slightly different version of your image and when they come together it's going to create your animation. One thing that you really need to do as well is to make sure you hide the background color. That is absolutely essential if you want to have a sticker on Giphy. If you have something that is, you know, the entire canvas and you don't have any transparency, it is just not going to be accepted. Now, how do you actually animate the text? The technique that I really like to do is super simple. So I'm just going to hide all my other layers here and just keep one layer with the text on it. So usually that's what I do. I start, I write the text once and then I create a layer on top of that. And on this layer, I'm going to quickly trace the same text over again. One pro tip here, if you activate in the settings the onion skip frame around two or three, you're gonna be able to see the layers or the frames around the frame that you're actively working on. You're gonna see them in transparency, so that way you can actually go ahead and trace and see what's on your other frames. Hopefully that made sense. But yeah, basically I just go over the text and trace very roughly so that when I put everything back together and play the sequence of all my layers, so all my frames, the text looks like it's kind of wiggling because there's a slight difference between all the frames, but overall it's kind of pretty much the same thing. So let's see here, if I could play, you can see that it's alternating between my two layers and then it's kind of giving out this wiggling effect. So if I go ahead and activate all the other layers that I created before, which is the text, you're gonna see it's kind of Again, this really nice, simple, wiggling animation. But we have a little bit more control over the animation in general, going back in the settings panel. And in that panel, while well, we already used the onion skin frames, which really doesn't affect the final results, it's just to help you in your workflow. But the first four settings, so loop, ping pong, one shot, and frame per second to affect the final result. Right now I have the loop option activated and the loop option is basically your sequence is going to go from the first frame to the last frame and then it's going to jump up back to the first frame. The ping pong option is not going to skip any frame, it's just going to go through one way and then the other going through all the frames. One shot is only going to go through your sequence once and that's the only option you don't want to use for Giphy. So you can use either loop or ping pong, just make sure you not selected one shot. You also have control over the speed of the animation, and that is in the frame per second option here. You can make it go really, really fast or super, super slow. So don't be afraid to experiment with these settings because it can really change the feel of your animation. But what if you want to have one shape that stays behind your text all the time like this? Well, I'm gonna quickly deactivate mine <laughs> and then I'm gonna show you how to do it. So if you just go ahead and draw a shape below all your layers like this, if you could play, you're gonna have the animation, but then you're just going to have the shape randomly come in at first. This is definitely not what we want. So what you need to do is making sure that your shape is really the last layer, so right on top of the background color. And if you go and tap on the frame in the animation menu, you're gonna have the background option, which you can just check. And that means Procreate is going to start seeing this layer as the background instead of as a frame. So that's a really simple way of animating text. Now, what if you want to animate an illustration? I'm gonna show you a couple ways. The first way is super simple, and it's going to be with this heart here. So you can draw literally anything, then duplicate your layers and rotate them slightly so that when you play your animation, it just looks like your illustration is moving. And the way to do that is first to draw your basic illustration, and if you want to draw in multiple layers, if you group them, Procreate is going to see that group as one frame. And then once you have your illustration, you can just swipe your group or your layer towards the left and tap on duplicate. So that's going to create a copy of your frame. And at this point, you can select the arrow tool and using the green handle, you can slightly rotate your piece. And now you can see if we press and play, you're going to get some sort of movement in your illustration. So I did that three times and yeah. Super simple, if I click play now, my heart is just moving ever so slightly, just enough to make it feel like a GIF and not just, you know, a static image. So again, here you could experiment with loop, ping pong, but in my case, since I only have three, it even, it just doesn't make a difference. So that's a super simple and quick way of animating illustrations that you already have. Now you could also go ahead and be a little bit more complex in your animations. So if we look at my layers here, what I did, I basically, again, created my cup with way too many layers, then group all of those layers. 
and selected this group and applied it as a background, which means the cup is always going to be in my illustration. And then what I animated was just a little part of it. So the steam, I made a bunch of separate layers with the steam changing ever so slightly on all of them, which creates this kind of moving steam. And I actually have a full tutorial showing you how to animate steam like this. If you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below. But otherwise, yeah, these are three very simple ways you can create animations for your Giphy stickers. Now, how do you export those Giphy stickers? Well, the first thing you need to know is you need to make sure that you do have some transparent background, but that the space around your sticker is not too big. So once you're done creating all your animation and everything, just select all your layers by swapping them towards the right. And then with your arrow tool, you can just move it around and resize it so that it takes up most of the canvas. Now, I think it's really useful to use the snapping tool. So just activating snapping here because then you can see guides and that can help you center your artwork and the canvas. It's not necessarily super easy, especially when you have multiples, but it's, it's still a good little helpful trick. So again, make sure that you hide your background color and we'll be ready to export. So let's come back to this little hard guy here. So to export, you just have to click on the wrench icon menu here at the top. And with the share option, you're going to select animated GIF. Now you can set your frame per second here as well. In my case, I like it where, where it is right now. And you need to make sure that you have transparent background activated. It's going to show you this alpha threshold menu, which if you put it down to zero, you're going to see it's creating some sort of an outline around your piece, which is definitely not what we want. And if we put it at 100%, then it's kind of eating in the piece. So we don't want that either. So you're going to have to experiment and find the right amount for your own project, your own piece. And it's probably going to vary from one to the other. But once you find something, just click on export and then you're going to get a few options. So you can select save image, which is going to save your GIF to your camera roll. But I don't know about you, my camera roll is a mess, so I prefer to save it in my files, selecting on my iPad. And for this, I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to rename GIFs. That way, I feel like everything is just going to be way more organized. So to locate your files at this point, you're just going to have to go on your iPad home screen and it's going to be in this file app, which is a blue icon. And you can see here, here it is. Now let's go back to our Giphy account. We're going to see at the top, you have this upload option. You really need to make sure you select sticker and not GIF, otherwise it won't work. And you're just going to select browse because we saved our GIF in our files. So we can see here I have my GIF folder and my hard GIF. So now it's going to show you the screen and you need to make sure that it is set to public. And you're also going to need to import or import. You're going to need to add five to 10 tags. And the tags need to be relevant with um, the illustration as well, but you might want to give a bit more clues in regards to who you are so that people can kind of find the stickers if they're looking for stuff in relation to your brand or your artist page or profile or something like that. And once you're done, you just have to click on upload to Giphy and you're going to see it is going to upload. Super simple. So you're then going to see this page, which is the page on your profile. And if you click on the GIF, you're going to have this little pencil icon. Now, I really recommend you check it out because usually I don't know why, but my tags don't stick. <laughs> like when I import them in the upload GIF page, they just don't show up afterwards. So I'll always go back and make sure that I add them twice. <laughs> so add them again by editing this GIF here. So again, you want to have some keywords into kind of what is an illustration, who you are as an artist, but also what the sticker can be used for. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload all my stickers, and then I'm going to show you how to apply for an artist profile. So once you have at least five to 10 stickers uploaded to your profile, you can apply to be an artist. So to do that, just go ahead and open up a new browser or in the same browser, you're going to type in giphy.com slash apply. And that's going to bring you to this page here. So you can see you have artist and you have brand. So brand would be more if you wanted something commercial, so like logo and stuff to kind of sell your products. Artist is more about, you know, just cute, fun stickers. So this is what we're going to choose. And you can see it just opens up this really short, super simple form that should already be pretty much filled out because we already filled out our profile. 
there might be a few more things that you need to input like your display name maybe your location and i know they ask for like your preferred websites so the one website you want them to look at so it could be social media or something like that and once that is all done you can just check this little box here at the bottom and then submit your application and it does say as you can see that it might take a while so i'm going to come back and when i do hear from them i'm going to tell you how long it took for me to get approved Okay, so I just got this email and it took less than 24 hours. So that was really quick, that's great. And once you are approved, there's nothing else you have to do. Your stickers will automatically be added to Instagram. It might take a few hours, maybe a few days, but they will be there. So let's say I create a story here with this beautiful picture. You should just go in the GIF. You can search for some keywords that you use. In my case, I had GDS and here they are. You can just add them to your stories like you would any other stickers. And they're really available for anyone to use at this point as long as they, as they know what to, to look for. And you can create really as many as you want just going back to your Kifi profile and uploading them like we did in an earlier step. So there you go. This was how to create custom stickers. I would absolutely love to see what you create. So make sure to share the results with me while on Instagram. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. It helps me. It helps the algorithm. It helps everything. <laughs> And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. I'll see you soon.